Amen, amen. Getting ready to move forward in God's word. Just so thankful for what God is doing through our pastor and his vision. Reverend Ed and Reverend Doug. Body of Christ. Kitchen staff is doing a wonderful job. Head cook, Mother Brown, is out. Due to illness, I understand she was in a car accident. I want to ask everybody to continue to pray for her and her speedy recovery. But I, I take pride, and I know she would, to know that the kitchen is not Mr. B. Things are going forward. Ms. B and Mary and others in the kitchen have continued in her honor to provide a good, hot, wholesome meal each and every day. But as always, we want you to know that meal is a temporary blessing. As good as it is hour from two from now, you're going to be hungry again. But we're praying that you not only take that physical meal, but you receive this meal that's coming from God in the form of his word. And saying that, I ask that you pray for me today as I share the word. It's been one of the weeks where I've been having a lot going on, but I've tried to stay committed to all of my obligations. The downside of it, I spent my time praying with God and in meditation, but haven't had enough time to dedicate the study of the Word. So just really praying that the Lord will lead me the way He want to lead me, that I will say it exactly the way He want to say it, that I will decrease and God will increase. So our subject today will be positives in the Christian life. See, there are some positives in the Christian life. I'll give you a little introduction. But I also want you to know there are some negatives in the mature Maturing of Christian life. Uh, subject today, we'll be dealing basically with chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 17 through 32. I'll be jumping around all of them. Verse 17 tells us, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles, the way the Gentiles walk, into fullness of the mind. Having their understanding, darkness, being aligned, alienated from the life of the God. Because of their ignorance that is in them, and this is the word, this is not Reverend Mike, because of their blindness of their heart, who being past feelings have given themselves over to, 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 to live in lives that are contrary to God's word. And to work all uncleanliness and greediness. See, we shouldn't walk as the Gentiles. No, 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 no. There was a time when we was of the world, but when you accept Christ in your life, there should be something different about you. There should be a different walk about you. That don't mean you're perfect, but people should be able to look at you and see Christ in you. Let not the sun go down on your right. Verse 26 tells us, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun, the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Christian folks get mad sometimes. People do things to us to upset us. And for a moment, that earthly side might try to kick in. But that's when the spiritual side, if you really trust it, is supposed to have more power than the earthly side. And something in you is supposed to do exactly what I saw Brother Walter and Sister B do this morning. And they was having fun. But, but, but at one moment, they got a little tense. That's the earthly side. Then the Holy Spirit side came in, and she smiled at Walter, and Walter smiled at her, and they got up and went and embraced each other. That's what you see Christian folks doing. We're not perfect. So a lot going on in this ministry. I want you to know, this body of Christ, we got all type of folks, me included, personalities. Things going on in your household that affect you in the house of God and the world hidden on you. So sometimes we come in here with little attitudes and little clicks and little things going on, but you need to see God working in us too. That's what I love about it. I can look at everybody in this body of Christ and tell you I honestly see God working with this ministry through our pastor, making a difference and sharing this word in us, and, and there's a difference in our lives. I heard Walter say the other day, now, if that was the old me, I would have handled it completely different. And I'm not picking on him to make him look bad. 
I'm picking on him to show God is in him. See, there are things you want to do on the earthly side, but when you've got the Spirit in you, it stops you from doing the earthly things. Amen. Let him that stole steal no more. The Bible makes it plain in 28 Ephesians. It says, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good. There was a time, I think all of us can say, we had some quick fingers and quick hands, and we did some things we shouldn't have done. But when you come into the calling, accepting Lord as your Savior, your conscience ought to get on you sometimes. And them thoughts you have that's rumbling along. That Holy Spirit is telling you, do what's right. Just do what's right. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Has the Holy Spirit used these in your life? And that's an exact example. That's why I used them to them two individuals in our ministry. That was fresh today. Christian folk make mistakes. But there are some positive sides to being a Christian. When you make mistakes, that Holy Spirit is still talking to you. And sometimes, and if you really believe in it, most of the time, that Holy Spirit is going to win out. You're going to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> And we're all guilty of that. And I love it when you see something happening and you would know that it's nothing but God. Man, I got some stuff in me. I'm going to tell you, I learned something. Me, Dick and Middle Brooks, Reverend Ed, Reverend Doug, Pastor went on a retreat, spiritual retreat, first one I was able to attend. And man, they did some teaching on the doctrine there, but one stuck real close to me. And I'm going to make this plan. I don't want to mess it up. Reverend Paul was preaching and said how sometimes at home things get a little tough. And he'd get out of pocket too being a preacher. Maybe his wife want to get him right. And she calls it set you free. <laughs> There's something about that earthly side. When folks get on your nerve, you want to set them free. And I ain't talking about setting them free in no good way. She's she, she going to let you have it. She's going to speak her mind. She's going to bless you out. And it's going to be some short little words in there. But when you say when God is really in you, it's not our job to set them free. Our job is to freely share the word of God. Freely share that we've been saved and, and we've changed and we may have handled it a different way at one time, but, but right now God is telling me to tell you, brother or sister, I'm going to pray for you now. And I'm asking that you pray for me. And Reverend Ed makes it so plain, but God on my side. No, I'd be telling you something totally different. I'm telling you. But when God is in you, you ain't trying to set folks free. You ain't trying to run folks off. You're trying to freely share God's word with them. You're trying to freely let your life be a testimony that he's taking me from this place to that place. I don't walk like I used to walk. Huh. I'm letting the Lord lead. There are some positive things to being a Christian, and you see them every day. Sometimes we look over them because we're looking through earthly eyes. All we see is the negatives. But when you look through godly eyes, it's easy to see the positiveness of what God is doing to each and every one of us. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 23 makes it plain. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God. And true righteousness and holiness. See, when, when, when you're truly a, a servant of God, a prisoner of God, when you, you truly committed your life to serving Him and living for Him, you are a new man. You are a new woman. The old side has, has died away. Notice the preceding verse. We are to put off the old man. 
put off that old man. That's hard to do sometimes. You let the world get in the way. But through God, anything is possible. Verse 22 tells us that you put off concerning your formal conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, lust of the flesh. Setting somebody free, telling them off, cussing them out, ain't nothing but pleasing your flesh. That ain't fixing the problem at all. It makes you feel good, but it does nothing to advance the kingdom of God. Our job is to freely share the good news that Jesus is real. You might want to let them know in that now, if the Lord wasn't in me. And there was a time old Reverend Mike used to box a little bit. And, man, I tell you, I had a good hook. And I can tell you today, I heard Reverend Mike say it, he's working on me. Spiritually, I, I, I want to be able to say I can turn the other cheek, but if you swing on me, I'm going to tell you, you might want to duck. Because I've got some things in me that the Lord is still working on. But I promise you, if you catch that love coming from me, I'm going to pray for you as soon as I hit you. So there's still growth. Now, I'm trying to be fun with this, but I want to make it plain. We as Christian folks have to understand that we're going to be challenged in this world every day. Every day. Are you being a phony? Or are you really one who's trusting God? Are you going to be able to allow somebody to talk about you and lie on you and, 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 and make up stuff about you and still love on them? And still say, brother and sister, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, yeah, it hurt a little bit. It hurts a little bit. But I know somebody who paid a greater price than anything that I can go through or you can go through. And that's Jesus. He had committed no sin. Guilty of nothing. And if he was willing to, to, to go through all that for you and I, Man. truly we can accept a little name calling, a look back, a look back biting. We ain't going to get caught up no, no few biscuits and bread. You ain't going to let somebody owe you two, three dollars and that take you all out of your Christian spirit. Some point you want to say, them two dollars ain't worth nothing no way. It probably wasn't for me. God has something better planned for me. Through the works of the flesh, Galatians 5, 19 and 21 tells us what that flesh should do to us. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, un uncleanliness, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfishness, ambition, dissension, envy. Drunkenness, I ain't missing them all, but I'm going to mention a few. All that stuff pleases your flesh. It does nothing to advance God's kingdom. I, I love it. We got a pastor, Brother Lawrence Eccles, that teaches spiritual truths, and he sets some good examples for us. I mean, he breaks it down and, and makes it plain. Because I, I, he made it so simple for me, I can, I can just check myself just like this real quick. He said, how do you know when it's the Holy Spirit or if it's sin. He says simple. If it's pleasing your flesh, if it's pleasing this right here, you can bet that it's a sinful call. It ain't the Holy Spirit. The Lord ain't worried about how you feel. He's concerned about your spiritual being, your heart. He's concerned about it. Do you understand you have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ? Through our suffering... People can see that Christ is in us. So when people are beating you down and talking you down, it's the perfect opportunity to show them that Jesus is in me. Because there was a time that this story would end totally different. We set you free. But our job is to freely share God's Word. Amen. Amen. Not going to be able to get it off. If he does, he may act like a lost person. I'm talking about Christian folks who say they've been saved. When, when all you hear is cuss words coming out their mouth. They get to church and say they got it all right because they got that acting face on. But when they leave the church and you bump into them, uh, you ain't going to hear, bless you, brother. You might hear something totally different. Don't step on their feet. 
You show my here something different. The same God that's in you when you come in the house of the Lord is with you when you walk out back in them streets. And people ought to see that. Again, I'm not saying we're going to be perfect all the time. I'm saying people should see Christ working within us at all times. When we're wrong, we're wrong. Repent. Admit you're wrong. Apologize. The last thing you want to do is say you love Jesus. You believe in him and you've never seen him. But here he is, your brother and sister that's walking around you every day, you can't love them. What greater contradiction? How can you love Jesus who you've never seen and say you're a Christian and not love your brother and sister who's around you each and every day? They ain't perfect. They got faults. Jesus is never happy when we do wrong, but he still loves us. He paid the cost before you was even born. He's already brought out all them dumb things you've done and, and you're doing. Because he's given you time to repent and accept him. If you still breathe. Still have a portion of your right mind. You're still on this side. But there is going to come a day where time is going to run out. And as our pastor makes it so plainly, you don't want to get caught out of that locked fence gate. You don't want your time to run out and you haven't made it right. You haven't repented. You haven't acknowledged that you've been a sinner. You haven't acknowledged that you've done wrong. And you haven't said, Lord, I want to turn. I want to turn from darkness to light. I believe in Jesus. Wash me. I'm giving my life to him. I'm, I'm rededicating. I want that Holy Spirit to dwell in me. Because I know the devil's out there. I know he's busy. No, know he's busy. But I know I serve a God who has all power. There's nothing he can't handle. Nothing he cannot get me through. But you got to trust him. The downward road. Romans 1, 18-37 tells us about God's wrath on unrighteousness. But it also says those of us who have accepted his calling and accepted Jesus, we don't have to worry about that. He got us. The price has been paid. We're not supposed to deal with things like folks who have no hope. We have hope. We have hope in Jesus Christ. That should be the example, the only example we need to, to get us through some things. Put on the new man. Verse 24 tells us, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, and through righteousness and holiness. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, the old man dies. That's sinful side. Now we have a new man in us, that Holy Spirit. So there's no excuse. A person who haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, at least they got an excuse. They don't know no better. But when you just said, you know he was born of a virgin, you know he lived, you know he suffered, you know he died, you know he rose, and you know he's coming back, you have no excuse. People ain't supposed to be able to catch you up with the same thing that they catch somebody who's living in darkness in. Because you know there's a light. And you know there's going to be one who, that's going to come back and, and his wrath is going to be on those who haven't heeded to his word and accepted his word. But you don't have to worry about that. So that should supersede any temporary problem that you're going through. If it's not, it's time for you to do some repentance. Amen. The old man is gone. The new man also has the Holy Spirit residing in him. This place is unlimited power at his disposal for victory. Victory is ours. The cost has been paid. The captives have been set free. We've been freed from the bondage of sin. So you're supposed to have some victories. 
Now, if you're having problems every day, every day, bad attitude, every day, you mad at the same person for something they did 15 years ago. You can't remember what you're mad about. I just don't like it. It's time for you to repent. They ain't the problem. The problem's right here. The problem's right here. You, you, you got to check yourself. Because you're supposed to be looking at them as God's children as well. He accepted you with your flaws. That means he's accepting them with their flaws. He still loves them. He has actually become a partaker of divine nature. When, you, when you're a Christian, when you accept the Jesus, you are a partaker of him. Jesus is in you. The Lord is, is in you through the Holy Spirit. Christ abides. If Christ is able to live through his body. When you look at Galatians 2 and 20, it tells us, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We should be able to look somebody in the eye and say, we know Jesus died for us. It's personal. Personal. He made it personal. You weren't even born yet, but he died for you. He died for you. He already paid the cost for all them stupid mistakes he knew you was going to make. All them excuses you made about the mistakes, he already knew about them. But he wasn't concerned about the law, the Masonic law. He was concerned about your faith and believing in Jesus. We, we, we couldn't make it if it was based on the law. We got too much sin in us. Man has a sinful nature. Because of that first Adam. We're only made clean through that second Adam, Jesus Christ, and the blood he shed it on Calvary. Brother Brown, amen, praying for you and the wife. That second Adam. He's the one that should should, should pop up in you when the world is, is charging against you. He's the one that's protecting you. He's the one that's showing you a way out of no way. Labor so that you can give to those in need. See, we shouldn't be stealing anymore. We shouldn't be grabbing. We should be laboring. We are co-laborers of this, this body of Christ. People should see us working. Not that we're trying to buy our way into heaven, but we're working to serve the body of Christ to help grow the kingdom of God. We're part of the kingdom agenda. Those who profess to love Jesus realize we're supposed to be laborers. Our job is to serve. That's what you see going on in the kitchen. That's what you see Brother Jerry and Brother Walter mopping and sweeping and cleaning and Deacon Miller Brooks and myself and others going out to the pantry and the Reverend and the associates here in the church every day being here to, to help fulfill your physical needs and your spiritual needs. We're laboring. Laboring. Now, I don't want to tell you where my hands been because you probably never want to touch me again. And I'm only trying to make a picture for you. All of us got that same problem. If everybody knew everything you've done, they wouldn't want to even touch you. Jesus knows, but he still wants to touch you. As Christians, we should be that way. Our job is, is to build up a brother and a sister. I heard either Deacon Middlebrooks or Brother Walter say that in devotion. Our job is to build each other up, love each other, not tear each other down. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get it off. I'm not going to be able to get it off. We do this work because we know that the Lord loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who died on the cross for us. We know that in three days he rose. We know that because there was witnesses, Mary Magdalene, some of the apostles, even when he reappeared to him, 
Later in the upper room, there were some of the apostles still in fear of what was going on around them in, in Jerusalem and all the politics. And, and they just didn't want to believe that Jesus had left them because they thought he was the solution to the earthly problem, the, the political side. They didn't truly really understand that he didn't come to save them from politics. He came to save their soul. So he showed back up eight days later with all of them present. Told Thomas, touch my hands, feel the hole. Touch my side, see where they stab me at, pierce me at. Amen. He was real. There was witnesses. He didn't even stop there. He charged them to share the good news. He left them with the Holy Spirit. And through these twelve disciples, they have continued to share God's word and documented it in the Holy Bible. And, and this word is here today for you and I, being shared and made plain. So we have no excuse. You have no excuse. So in saying that, we're going to offer the invitation. If you've never accepted Jesus as the head of your life, if you've been living in darkness, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but today, Reverend Mike, this kitchen has showed you some love and shared some spiritual truth with you, and you want to make a change. Today could be your day. All you got to do is raise your hand. God will see you. He'll see you. Amen. Do we have one? Amen. Amen. Well, maybe you're saved. And I thank God that everybody in here is saved based on no one raised their hand. And you've accepted it. But you're also willing that you hadn't got it all right lately, that the world has kind of tugged on you, and, and sometimes that fleshly side won over, instead of the spiritual side. But today you want to be renewed in your spiritual hope and, and your bigger back. You want your heart to burn because Jesus is working on you. All you got to do is raise your hand. He'll see you. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. Let's give God a hand. That's what this is about. Do we have another that want to come for prayer and repentance? Do we have another? You can come right down here with this sister and we'll pray for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you this thing is real. This thing is real. Don't be left out. Don't get caught out in the dark. Because if you're breathing, he's giving you time. But I can't guarantee you what's in front of you. But I can guarantee you if you accept him right now this moment, he will receive you. Amen. Let's give God a hand.